on to another project. Spin the camera around here and I'll keep talking for a minute. What we have is on this system, or on this truck, it's a Chevy 6400, it's a 1950 two-ton flatbed grain truck, really. Um, it has a power braking system on it. It's called a Hydrovac. And this is the actual power... Uh, it's a vacuum module. It's a power assist for the braking system. It mounts on the frame, and there's a vacuum tank, which, uh, that's on the bench. Right there is the vacuum tank. That mounts on the frame through a series of piping and brake lines. This is your brake assist, your vacuum brakes. Power brakes, if you will. Um, I'm going to tear this apart and see what I find with it. I'm assuming it's going to be in no better shape than anything else was. Every, master, every brake cylinder and the master cylinder, there was no brake fluid in anything. The cylinders were all set right up, rusted right, solid. So I'm assuming this isn't going to look pretty inside here. There's something sloshing around in it. But I don't know if it's going to be brake fluid or what. But I can send this out and have it rebuilt and send it back. It's uh, like 300 and some dollars with a 250 or something like that core charge. Of course, on top of all that, shipping. It's got to go to, I believe, Missouri. But anyway... I think I can get my hands on, though I'm not 100% sure, a rebuild kit for this. So I'm going to try to take this apart and see what I have and see if I can get a rebuild kit in it, see if the insides are all rusted. You know, if the inside, there's a big piston here. This is your master piston. There's a big piston in here that I believe might have leather seals in it. And then there's a smaller one. Oh, let me get my finger out of the way. There's a smaller one up here. So I know. Everything on the outside doesn't look good, but it all depends on what the inside looks like. So, anyway, I'll shut up now, and uh, I'm going to see if I can start tearing this apart. I really don't want to pay the shipping and have somebody else rebuild it if they're going to do nothing more than I can do. So, bear with me. We'll see. Worst case scenario, this gets trashed. Um, I, I know they make conversion kits out there, but I can't find one that anybody will tell me will fit this truck. Most of them don't tell you anything. A few of them will tell you they won't work with a manual transmission, which is what this has got. So I, those are 300 bucks. I don't really want to spend $300 and find out it won't fit. So worst case scenario, if this is crashes and burns on me, I'm going to just run a master cylinder alone without power brakes. Um, I've done a little research, talked to a couple people and been on a couple of forums and the consensus for that particular situation is um as long as you're not going to be driving it at current highway speeds which these vehicles were not designed for that they were designed for 40 45 miles an hour tops as is uh as long as you're not going to be you wouldn't be able to get this to do 65 i don't believe without transmission remodel remod and uh another engine in it for any length of time anyway or if you're going to have, haul heavy loads and i have no intention of doing this this is going to be just a truck with the farm logo on it um a parade truck a show truck just a nice thing to have in the yard if you will or in the garage i hope but anyway i don't plan on hauling any heavy loads with it or and then driving any faster than it's designed for 40 45 miles an hour so with that in mind, should be fine with just manual brakes. I mean, you'll probably have to stand on them a little bit if you get stupid and go too fast, but um, we'll see. If that doesn't work or if I don't feel like standing on them that much or if the wife can't even stop it, then uh, we'll have to go with some kind of a power brake system. But for right now, we're going to cross our fingers and back, and we're going to see what kind of luck I can run into with this thing. But anyway, I'll put you back on hyperspeed as I putz with this and we'll go from there so we'll catch you in a minute now this is kind of much as I expected I'm not real happy with the way things are looking inside these ports they took off I mean there was obviously a um, well the spring came out of there but on top of the spring was a 
the bottom of this unit you saw me messing with it to get it on there was a diaphragm with a plunger that must activate this uh, secondary piston or flow control but anyway these look like they're going to be a problem especially that one because it's so rusted and they're an inch and a half long but that's i think the next step take that off and see what we got it doesn't look good right now but there's all that granulation i don't know what it is for sure it's not rust in there yet yet a lot of it looks like uh stuff that builds up in copper but anyway anyway i'm gonna shut this off and uh get started Bring you back to life for just a second. For those of you who didn't know what I was doing, rubbing this thing on there, I'm not trying to file the threads off. This is actually, if I can get this thing to focus, which I guess not, there. It's a thread chaser.
Okay, we'll take you for a little walk here. You watch me tear it apart, but take you for a little walk over here and see what we got. Um, this is by no means um, perfect inside, but I'll tell you what, it is nowhere near what I would have expected, and I guess I can uh, thank my lucky stars that it had the brake fluid in it. So I'm not sure if there's even supposed to be any brake fluid in this part, to be honest with you. This, I thought, was the vacuum piston. But that might be because all this other things gone bad here. But anyway, it's cruddy. It's got crud in it, and it needs to be cleaned up. And I'm not sure if this part should separate from it or not. I think so. I'm just not sure how. I got to clean it up see if there's a ring in there. Uh, the book doesn't really show definitively, but I think there's a snap ring in there somewhere. But anyway, this part doesn't look good over here. It's all that dry corrosion in the places where there wasn't any brake fluid. But we'll see. I think I can get a rebuild kit for this. I'm up for uh, throwing it in it myself. And uh, we'll go from there and see what happens. But anyway, guys, I think I'm going to pack it in for the day. And... Uh, Go from there. I'll catch you later. Okay, well, a little disappointed today. Started on another project. I was pretty excited. Uh, the, uh, I'm going to switch the camera. The HydroVac, if you can see right hand out of the picture so it focuses not on it right there there's a vacancy those are the brackets for it i took that off it's over here between in the vise and on the shelf counter here and was putting the rebuild kit in it working on putting the rebuild kit in it i've got the shop manual i've got the diagram that came with the kit and i've got a diagram that was online that describes a major rebuild kit there's a couple different versions of this, but this is supposed to be the kit for my nine and a half inch um, hydro vac. And yet, uh, I took pieces out of this that don't look even close to the pieces, nor does the picture that came in the kit. And number two, this seal right here on the main piston, I do not see one. There is not one here. And this is the brand new kit right here. And that's the only cup that came with it. All right, this is all the old stuff I took out of there off the main piston. That's the cup that came off it. That's the cup that matches that cup. All right, that's it. The only other stuff I have new is the bleeder, the two brass gaskets. With, um, and this is the felt, the O-ring, those two seals that are in there, I believe, are the two seals that are in this bag. But there's no, there is no seal for that piston right there. So that's not good, and that's the main power piston. That's the one that sends the power out to the brakes. I did get the rest of the parts for my HydroVac, the brake power brake booster. Um, as you can see, well, you can't really see it, but it's located right there inside the frame there. This is a vacuum tank, as you can see there. That's where the uh, vacuum accumulates, if you will. In other words, vacuum lines run back to the tank, and then from the tank, they go back over to the hydro vac. That's your brake booster. It's mounted on the frame. It's not mounted on the firewall on these units. But anyway... Um, that's what we're going to do today. I got the last of the parts. I got that piston seal and I did get the new leather. Uh, the leather has been put in a plastic bag and it's soaking in mineral oil. It's been about day three and uh, we're going to get at that. We're going to try to get that unit rebuilt and squared away. That's what we're going to do with this trip. As you can see, we've been working on some other stuff intermediately. Um, that'll be different videos in the meantime. So bear with it, enjoy, and we'll see you on the other side of the hydrovac. Okay, there we have one 15-inch hydrovac unit. The model number 
374980. Everything is together finger tight because of the parts I was missing. Um, nothing's put together beyond hand tight because some of the seals in here need to be changed. There's a piston in here that I needed to seal for. That needs to be replaced. Everything in this unit right here, I believe, is done. So I don't think I need to take that apart again. Really not much to see in there. There's a diaphragm in here and a spring, and that's really about it. There's not a lot more in there that I remember. These U bolts will come out that way. You loosen them up just enough so you can get them off the bottom. Work them up, turn them around, and get them in the right direction. They'll come right out the top. Just save taking the nut all the way off them. You got to watch out you don't lose your lock washer. Or they wind up taking the nut off anyway and just put the lock washer on. Gonna get them in just the right spot for them to fit and turn around good. Okay, so this comes apart, comes off that hose at the same time. In here, there's a brand new old ring around there that I put in here, and yet this spring goes in here. The piston is in here. We're gonna change the felt on this too. Well, felt and leather. There's a leather seal on here. We're going to change that and you'll see the felt in there. This comes apart and goes back together. We'll do that. There's a spring in here that holds pressure on that felt. <clears throat> and we're going to clean this out really good and clean. It's got a little bit of crud in it. We're going to turn this over and we're going to hold it in the Vice with that point, we're not going to be putting any pressure on this anyway. The vice right now is just a, another pair of hands. We're going to clean this out really good. I put a little oil in here um, just to kind of lube things up. I wasn't sure what should be in here at the time. I actually put some power steering fluid in here. So I'm just going to clean that all out of here really good. It was basically to keep the inside of this can from rusting. If it was a little rusty and a little cruddy, I shined it up and cleaned it up with some um, 400 grit and uh, some steel wool. We're going to get some brake cleaner in there. I have a really hard time finding a good position for the camera because it seems like every time I set the camera up in a good spot where you can see <laughs> it's right where I wind up and I don't I don't know how to fix that I really don't so I apologize my head or my back or something's in the way all the time but that's just the way it's gonna be until I get the magic answer to it figured out which I don't know what that is I haven't tried putting this back together yet. I do know this spring goes in here. All right. And then that cover goes on. So we have to push this all down in here and put a little pin in um, the shaft that holds that together. So it might be quite challenging. Pretty clean. So we can stand it up again now. Get it in the vise just right and it'll kind of sit in there and you can clamp it just enough by that mounting bolt that it'll hold just enough so it doesn't fly out of there unexpectedly. This is our leather seal. We've had it. It replaces this one here. We've had this soaking in mineral oil for about four days. 
But anyway, we're going to set this aside for a second because we got to put that in the vise. We'll set this right here on that leather. If we're going to put this in the vise this way, you'll see there is a nut or a hex on that end. We're going to put that in the vise. Pretty much like so. And then this will. And then I'll turn it over and put this end in the vice then. This is the shaft that's going to come up through the top here. This tube will come off. This will come up through, and you can see there's a hole in it. we got to get a pin through that. All against that spring pressure. But you'll see, we can do it. It's just uh, not easy. There's a few threads on the end of this that got dinged up a little bit. Okay, that can be on hold, ready to go. We're going to flip this over. That's the nut off the bottom and the washer. So we are now going to put this in the vise like we had it originally. Trying to decide which way up I want this when I start taking it apart and putting it together. I almost think this way might be the way I'm going to want it. If I can figure out how to. That was another seal right there that I was thinking the new one would come with. But, which it obviously does not. little seal here. This goes on first. And then this goes on there. Between them two plates. Then may not get too bad though. This goes on this way. Clean all these off as we go.
this one goes on this way. These have flanges. These are cupped, dished. You have to kind of keep track of which way that dish goes. Basically, they're both dished down, so when you pull them down, it flares that. It helps to flare that seal out. Now let's see if the mineral oil made this stretch any. <laughs> it's a joke, guys. Well, if it stretched, it didn't stretch it enough. I'm really hesitant as to whether I want to cut this and put this in there. Close this bag of mineral oil up before we wind up with that all over the counter, more so than there it is. Wipe this spring off. It has little grippy things all along it here for dripping. I'm assuming the felt. Which I assume. in there that away. Oh, grip. Whoops. The other way. No, I've got it right. Goes in there that way. And then you hook the end of it onto itself here. If you can see it, probably right in your way. And that hooks, whoops, goes down in there, it's not face. And that hooks to itself here. It turns into a regular little jerk. But anyway, when you hook it to itself, it puts pressure on this felt. Hence the uh, well, that's not even going to close in there. Well, I'm thinking maybe this felt's going to get flipped up this way, the taller way, because it is not square, it is rectangular, so to speak. Let's see what that does. Puts a little notch in that spring so it's constantly pushing out. And then that's kind of what this last tier disc here does too is keeps that spring from sliding in too far or going the wrong way.
Okay, so this goes, see this notch goes right over that spring right there, like that, and over the center. And that sits down in there like that. got one of these and you're going to do this don't rebuild it per my instructions do some research online um, do some research for a place that will rebuild them for you there's a few places that will do that there's places out there for parts there's places for information there's not a ton of any of the above but the places are out there so please don't go by what I'm showing you. All right, I would say that's probably enough. There's no torque spec that I could find. <clears throat> now we're gonna take a hammer and a center punch. Double check, make sure we got this all together the way we want it. We got the shaft, we got the washer, we got the disc, we got the seal, we got the leather, we got the disc, we got the felt, we got the spring, we got the top plate, we got the nut. So we're looking good there with that. We're going to take a little prick punch, center punch. Just going to ding these threads in a couple of spots. Remember, somebody might want to take this apart. So we don't want to do too much, but we want to stop it from rattling apart. That's all it amounts to. <coughs> Just enough so when this piston goes back and forth, if it does happen to turn, it's not going to turn eventually off the nut. And that should be enough to stop that work just fine so there's that now we're going to take this out of here we're going to swap places with these set that right there on that clean napkin towel we're going to put this baby in here We're going to get her gripped up pretty good. We can't go too crazy because we're gripping on threads, but it's the mounting bolt, so it's not that crucial. But we got to fight this little darling here, so we're not going to freaking uh, argue with it too much. We take a clean towel, put a little mineral oil on it. The bag wasn't closed. Good thing I didn't dip her over, huh? We're just gonna wipe this with mineral oil just for the sake of wiping it with mineral oil, just to say we did. Just to say we did. This, I believe, I'm going to double check, I believe that goes in there like that. It's not going to sit there like that, obviously. Yes, yeah, so it goes in there with the big end towards that. However, the piston goes in there first, duh. The piston goes in first, boys and girls. This thing right here, got to go down in there first. We're going to take our mineral oil rag, towel, we're going to dip it in here again, and we're going to wipe the walls with it. Saving this mineral oil, because this is going to wind up getting dumped right in the bottom part of this.
Okay. As you say, you put this down in there kind of crooked like that. And carefully spin it upright. And there you have now. This goes down over that. Like I said, now it sits over that washer. Now we're charged with putting that down over that, having that little thing ready, put down over and put a pin in there, and it's not fun. But anyway, we got to get organized and get ready. Here's the little piston, and there's the little, I probably got my head right in the way, but there's this piston, that this seal right here, I, it's here now, but I did not come with the first batch. Behind this spring, there's a pin, that spring holds that pin in. So we have to slide this over the slide the cap on, slide this down over this shaft far enough to push that spring back and put that pin in there. Got to get this seal on and to check both of our drawings. This seal needs to go this way. All right. So we do have some they did send some o-ring grease rubber grease, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put just a dab of that on a couple of things here. Just to make life a little more interesting because it'll make it slippery, that's all. As you can tell, this is not going to be fun because it's got a long ways to go. We'll be golden. Got her. Well, worst case scenario, if this thing doesn't work, as long as it doesn't lock the brakes up on me, if it doesn't work, function, I should be alright. It's not like I'm going to be hauling huge loads with this or driving 70 miles an hour. It's just going to be a show truck slash parade truck, if you will. So, it should work just fine with just manual brakes. Quite disappointed. I should have, uh, when I ordered this ma major rebuild kit, I thought it was going to have everything in it I needed. Feels a little better. Get some oil pressure on it. It ought to do something. So anyway, now we got to make sure we don't need anything else in here. This is this. Okay, so now for this little operation, we're, we're going to oil that or lube that up when we're ready the last minute. This is the operation where we got to slide this thing down over there. And push the pin through all at the same time. Which is not impossible. There's a seal there. We've already done that. We've got that lubed up. We may use our brush here. Put a little lube on the end of the shaft here, though, just to make things a little easier. I'm trying not to touch that spring because I really don't want mineral oil all over my hands when I'm trying to do this part. That's just to help that seal slide down over there a little better. Okay, I think right now I've got that pin half pulled out. I'm going to go get a set of forceps. If you ever get a chance to get your hands on any of these, I've accumulated them over the years from auctions and stuff. They're actual for medical forceps. They're great because you can clamp them onto something. They're like a vice grip. But they got pretty good little teeth and they're real fine. So we're going to leave that about like that. And then we're going to see. Okay, our O-ring is still there. Around the edge here, that's new. We got to line that pipe up. We got to make sure we get that. We got to get our spring probably lined up in a couple of spots. One down over that washer. Up in this thing. Got too many places it can go. No, not really. It kind of just goes where it goes, I guess. Are you 
running. I hope I turned you on. Because if I didn't turn you on, you didn't get none of that. Yeah, we got you. All right. We got an hour long video here of me trying to wrestle with this thing. Kind of wondering if I put these in there. I didn't try it. I haven't tried this. So I'm not sure what the best way to do this is going to be. See if two of those will help. At least one on each side. Because this is the tricky part, is lining this. Put a little bit of this rubber grease on there. Maybe it'll help things go a little quicker here, a little easier. That spring where it belongs in the bottom, spring where it belongs in the top. And line that shaft up, get it started up through that seal. Line the hose up, get that lined up. And then we got to get our can lid in place. Oh, don't do this too. Off the freaking holes there now, ain't I? All right, hang on, guys. Okay, boys. You have had a lousy view so far, haven't you? Anyway, I love it when you have a book. So when you try something and it doesn't work, you can go back and look at the book, and it tells you how you should have done it the first time. But anyway, now we're going to put this thing together the way the book says because my way didn't work. Who knew? Who knew, you know? But anyway... And get these ready in case we want them so this is how we do this supposedly the hard part is keeping this little snot face down there far enough so you can get this thing on there and put that pin through it Like that. I know I was right in your way guys, but there wasn't much I could do about it. So now we have that in there where it belongs. Finally. Spring is not quite where it belongs. Where it belongs now. See how it looks up here. Looks good to me on the top. Okay, now, get our hose lined up somewhat close. Put that in there like that. Well, that made life a lot easier. <laughs> Must be them boys that wrote that book, tried it my way, and it didn't work a couple times, huh? Anyway, so that's that. Okay. Now we've got this tightened in, and we're just going to snug this nut on this seal down here. Tighten this top on. 
hopefully we can get it somewhere near, which it's not. This is where we may have to do a little tweaking. That's going. Trying to get that bleeder to point up. These two mounts right here are the two that it mount bolts are the two that it mounts to, and they're parallel with the frame. So up is that way. So we're trying to keep that as close to up as we can. Really, the purpose of this lock nut is so you have the option to do that adjusting. Okay, that pretty much completes the assembly of the hydro vac. Now it's just a matter of getting everything situated and see if it uh, works basically. The next step will be getting my brake lines tightened to this. They've all been mocked up to fit. Now it's just a matter of getting them actually tightened up to it, get some brake fluid in the system and see if it works without vacuum. I don't have any way to put vacuum to it. Let's see if the manual brake system even functions and see if this leaks anywhere, if it pumps this tank full of brake fluid or what. And then I've got to get, this is where the main vacuum hose goes to, that's ready. This is an air inlet, so when this diaphragm goes back, air can come in. Um, the brake fluid coming in here activates a valve it puts the vacuum down to here, which, well, to the top of this piston in here, which pushes it up, which pushes this piston in here, which pushes brake fluid out to your brakes. And when you let off on this, this has to let air in, because the vacuum is sucking it up. So when you let off on these brakes, it moves the valve in here and lets the air in, lets that spring push this back, takes pressure off this. So... If everything works we're good to go so I'll take you for a walk and we'll go over there and we'll put it in the truck okay boys and girls we're gonna put this in here we're gonna get it hooked up permanently hopefully that's the plan this needs to go up here and then get out of the way for a minute Okay, so let me think. This goes in here this way. This has to kind of move around for us here. Because everything has to go in about 16 different directions here at one point or another. Front bolts are in. Get this thing up in its bracket again. Get this back bracket on. The nut for that is right here. I'll get a bolt in the front end there, or nut on the bolts in the front end. Air bolts right here, nuts and washers. They actually tighten stuff up. This has been mocked up and just hanging here loose for about a month. Waiting on parts. Um, I could have, I could have sent this out to get it rebuilt, but 
I don't know. It just it just seemed like a lot of money in shipping more than anything else. Getting it shipped to where it had to go. The darn thing's pretty heavy. Hose clamps and stuff. I'm trying to fasten from underneath, though it's tempting to fasten everything from up here. I'm trying to think ahead to the point where someday, if you ever had to work on some of this stuff, unless you take the bed off the truck, or actually right here, the cab comes back to, well, there's a running board. The cab comes back to about here. So this stuff is not accessible from the top down. It's going to be accessible from down here. So, for example, when I'm tightening up a hose clamp, I'm trying to tighten it from the bottom. It's a lot easier from up here. But, if I ever have to work on it, access is going to be pretty much strictly from underneath. So, even though I can't be, I'm not guilty of the best planet, I'm trying to think ahead a little bit. Okay, there's the vacuum supply hose. I need to run a hose from this up to any kind of an air filter so it doesn't suck in dirt when it sucks in air. It's just an at atmospheric air exchange, but it should have a filter on it. I think I've got, I think I've got a air filter laying around here that might be threaded on the end. I don't know, I gotta find it and look at it. If it is, I'll just make up an adapter and we'll mount it. I'll probably mount it up in here somewhere in the frame. Otherwise you'd have to run a hose up and into the engine compartment or up into the dad cab or something like that. And I just, I don't know if it'd be worth it, if that'd be necessary. That's the hydrovac system. The next step, as far as the braking system is concerned, we did the front brake return springs. They're new. The rear end has been done. All the brake lines are in place now. The hydrovac is in place. So the next step is to fill the rear end with the mineral oil, which I can do that. And then it'll be fill the system with brake fluid and test the manual side of the brake system and see if that works without this being activated and make sure this doesn't leak all over or nothing else does. Check the integrity and get it bled. And then we can't really test the operational aspect of that until we get the engine redone and back in it with vacuum. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the plug. There's a little plug right there on the bottom of that hydro vac. I'm gonna pull that and then I've got a big syringe here I'm going to suck that mineral oil up with and I'm going to squirt it in there until it either starts coming back out or what I've got is going to go in there and that's going to be it. All right so that was the hydrovac system rebuild the best we could do <coughs> with what parts we got sent. Um, I don't know if it's going to work or not. I have my questions.